For SunSentinel.com, this is Ira Winderman with your latest Ask Ira, Miami Heat mailbag. Our first question today comes from CJ, who says, Chris Bosh now has less health risk than other players who may have unknown conditions. His is known and can be closely monitored. He can be monitored with ultrasound. There is no reason he cannot play at an all-star level again. CJ, I think the difference here is because you know what the risk is, you also know how to minimize the risk, which in his case would be avoiding contact sports. However, we also know there are plenty of people in many lines of work who have a degree of risk in what they do because it's what they want to do. I do think, though, with Chris, it will lead to an unusual set of circumstances this season. Anytime we hear the word contusion or bruise that is used to describe any incident, we know it could possibly lead to something else. And yet we have to remain cognizant to this fact. It was kidney illness and then a kidney transplant that at one point stalled Alonzo Mourning's career, and yet when he returned, it was a knee injury that ultimately ended his career. So I think right now we sit back, we let the doctors handle the medical side of it, but yes, it very much looks like Chris Bosch will be back in the fold for the Miami Heat. Our second question comes from Ryan, who says, Since we have no chance at a ring, with the Cavaliers and Warriors being the NBA favorites, we might as well tank. Then we could add a good talent and maybe a star in 2017 free agency. Ryan, it's easy to say that tanking is the way. However, when you have Hassan Whiteside, Chris Bosh, and Goran Dragic on your roster, it's going to be hard to be bad enough where you actually can tank to one of the top picks in the draft, especially when you also have players like Justice Winslow, Dion Waiters, and Josh Richardson. I think what winds up happening is you go into the season planning on winning, hoping to win, take that goal. If something happens along the way, an injury or an illness, well, that'll redefine the Heat anyway. But I don't think this Heat roster that Pat Riley has put together, especially with Chris Bosch likely coming back, can go into the season saying, let's get a top draft choice, let's make the most of this first round pick before we give up those two we have to to Phoenix for the Goran Dragic trade. I think you let it all happen organically. And right now, if you have Whiteside and Bosch and Dragic, it might be hard to be a champion. But I also think it'll be pretty hard to be really bad. And our last question comes from Jack in Fort Myers who says, it seems Briante Weber is likely to be sent to the Sky Force to make room for Beno Udre. But can't the Heat swap players on the 15-man roster with those in their D-League affiliate, sending down players who may be struggling to bring up other players who have outgrown such a junior league? Jack, unfortunately for Briante and other Webers and other players rather in the D-League, that's not how it works. Any player on the 15-man roster that's sent to the D-League still counts against that NBA 15-man ro- maximum. I think what the Heat tried to do this season was this. Give enough money, six-figure guarantees, to Rodney Magruder, Stefan Jankovic, and Akara White, that if they prove themselves in Sioux Falls, that the Heat at least might get the first crack if they're going to make it to an NBA roster. As for Weber, I think it'll be interesting. I think he still could be sent to Sioux Falls for seasoning and playing time with such a crowded Heat backcourt, even if he makes the final 15-player roster. However, should Josh Richardson miss more time than anticipated with his knee injury, I could see the Heat needing Weber for his defense in the backcourt as well. Those are today's three questions. We'll be back tomorrow with three more for SunSentinel.com. I'm Ira Winderman.